Good morning, this is Victoria Beal with the Ohio LTAP Center. I'd like to welcome you to the third of three webinars on the Civil Rights and Labor Subcontractor Payment Reporting System, Prompt Payment. Um, we have Owait Supnicker with us who will be doing the presentation this morning and David Walker will be joining in at the end to um, help with moderating questions that I'm hopeful you'll be putting in the question pod throughout the presentation. Um, so our housekeeping items before I turn things over to await are please make sure that as you have questions, you put them in the question area of the GoToWebinar box. Um, go ahead and put those in as await is presenting and they'll be read off at the end. And in addition to having the questions responded to through the audio on the webinar, we'll be sending out a list of the questions with responses after the webinar is completed. The other item is we are attempting to record this webinar and if we're successful, we will send out a link to the recording once it's been posted. But if the webinar recording doesn't work, you are very lucky because you're here live and in person, at least on your computer, to be able to participate in this webinar. Um, so we want to make sure that we're able to get your questions in and uh, get them answered for you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to Await now because I believe those are all my housekeeping items. Are you ready, Await? I am. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Civil Rights and Labor Subcontractor Payment Reporting Webinar. Uh, my name is Audrey Supnikar, a business analyst with the Office of Business and Economic Opportunity here at ODOT. Uh, today's agenda, uh, the topics we'll be covering is the introduction and purpose, Ashtabha Project Civil Rights and Labor, prompt payment, specifically the payment requirements, and the FHWA 1273, then entering those payments in CRL. And we'll have a demonstration of that. Uh, we do have some reports available for you to use as well, and we'll cover those. And then we'll go through payment affidavits, contact information, and then we'll have uh, questions and follow-up. So let's, okay, introduction and purpose. The introduction is to inform prime contractors and subcontractors on ODOT-LET construction projects on how to record payments in CRL for the purpose of being in compliance with contractual requirements and FHWA regulations. So there was a notice to industry that was sent back on December 12th of 2019. And the notice included that prime contractors working on contracts that include Proposal Note 31 shall become compliant by entering and signing all previously made subcontractor payments for open projects by February 1st, 2020, and by continuing to enter and sign some contract payments as they are made. And two previous notifications to the industry were made, one on January 9th, 2016, and also on June 29th of 2017. So let's go ahead and discuss Ashtabha Project Civil Rights and Labor. So what is Ashtabha Project? It is a web-based enterprise system for managing the construction contract lifecycle from estimation to construction. It's designed by transportation professionals for transportation professionals. It's a web-based software with external access options. So you as contractors will access Ashtabha Project externally. It has mobile app capability, has cloud hosting availability, and is 30 years in production. So just to give you a, a brief overview of the, the technical side of it, uh, it's the data that's stored in a single location and single st uh, standard security model, captures information at the source, and has easy reporting for information from various modules. So we will also actually be looking at a couple of the, of the reports uh, while we're going through uh, the demonstration part of the webinar. And the module that we wanna focus on is down to the lower left here, which is the Azure Project Civil Rights and Labor. 
and also Ashdorn. It's used by 50 agencies, including Washington, D.C., and two Canadian provinces. So CRL, uh, Civil Rights and Labor, is a module within Ashdor project that allows the effective administration of an agency's external civil rights and labor compliance activities. So contractors and subcontractors will use CRL to submit electronic subcontractor payment information. This will accelerate the decommissioning of the paper-based payment affidavit process, and we'll be discussing the payment affidavit process towards uh, the end of the webinar. So prompt payment. So prompt payment, so after ODOT makes a payment to the prime contractor for work on a contract, the prime contractor is in turn responsible for paying its subcontractors. And when the prime contractor has paid the subcontractors, those subcontractors are responsible for paying their own subcontractors or tier subcontractors. So the requirement comes from proposal note 31, the code and federal regulations 49, 26, 29 require that ODOT establish a mechanism to monitor prompt payment requirements to all subcontractors. Additionally, Ohio Revised Code ORC 4113.61, the timeline limitation on payments to subcontractors and materialment establish, establishes that payments must be made within 10 calendar days after receipt of payment from the owner. So after ODOT has paid to the prime contractor, the prime contractor has within 10 calendar days to make that payment to the subcontractor. Uh, additionally, the prime contractor shall notify the department that it has complied with prompt payment requirements set forth in construction material specification 107.21, utilizing the civil rights and labor system. The prime contractor will enter subcontractor payments within 10 calendar days of payment from ODOT. Uh, regarding retainage, so promptly release any retainage held as set forth in any subcontractor supplier agreement within 10 days of department acceptance of work involving the subcontractor or supplier from whom retainage has been held. For the sole purpose of establishing a time frame for the release of the subcontractor supplier retainage, acceptance of subcontractor supplier work will occur when the subcontractor supplier has complied with the requirements 109, 12, A, B, and C. So in the demonstration part, uh, we'll be showing you an example of where retainage can be held. Regarding FHW 1273, 1273 must be physically incorporated, not referenced in all contracts, subcontracts, and lower tier subcontracts excluding purchase orders, rental agreements, and other agreements for supplies or services related to construction contract. So ODOT physically incorporates 1273 in all federal aid contracts, and subsequently the prime contractor must meet this contractor obligation by placing 1273 in all subcontractor and supplier contracts that it enters into and further require that all subcontractor and suppliers place the same in each of the lower tier contracts as well. So during the sign-in process of prompt payment, the prime itself will acknowledge receiving a physical copy of form FHWA 1273. And here's an actual example that is taken from CRL when the process of signing a subcontractor payment, you will see that the text is default uh, entered in by ver the text reads by verifying the subcontractor payment, payer certifies it received a physical copy of form 1273, physically incorporated in each subcontract and require its inclusion in all tier subcontracts. So um, this text is entered in by default, but if the contract is 100% state funded, uh, you may go ahead and remove this text. And if you uh, are not sure if it's a, a federally funded contract or state funded contract, uh, you can go ahead and still remove that text. And likewise, when the 
subcontractor goes to verify the payment, uh, they will be also receiving similar tax that FHWA 1273 is physically uh, placed in the subcontract as well. And again, if this contract is 100% state funded, the subcontractor can go ahead and remove this tax. So entering and signing payments in CRL. So the overview here of the workflow is uh, the prime contractor enters a subcontractor payment records for the work the subcontractor has performed for each estimate payment, and then will sign those subcontractor payments. Then the subcontractor will go ahead and review those payments and verify receipt of the, the subcontractor payment. And then the agency can go ahead and view those subcontractor payment transactions. And that completes that process. So uh, let's go ahead and go through an actual demonstration of this. And I'm actually going to go ahead and log in to our training environment and show you the process of entering a payment from a prime contractor and signing that payment. And then the subcontractor will verify that payment. So I'm actually using a training environment. Uh, you, um, when you're logging in, will use the actual production environment. So I'm going to go ahead and log in as my prime contractor. I have my username saved. You'll enter in the password. And then you want to make sure when you log in that you select ODOT online. OK, so I'm ready to log in here as the prime contractor. Uh, because this is a training environment, it just takes a little bit uh, longer to log in. But when you log into the actual production environment, it, it will be much quicker. So we'll give it here a little bit of time to log in. Okay, so the page is loading here. Okay, so I'm logged in here, and this is my home page. And when you're logged in, you want to make sure that you are set to the correct role for entering your subcontractor payments. And the role that you want is displayed here, and it's ODOT contractor subpayment. So if you have both the payroll role and the subcontractor payment role, you want to make sure that you select this specific role, ODOT contractor subpayment. OK, so that one's already selected. And this is my home page. Now I want to go ahead and enter a contract ID for the contract that I want to record a payment for. And I'm going to go ahead and enter my one for this demonstration, LAK87799. And you can see here the contract is displayed. And um, the prime contractor here is Cocosin Construction Company. And then I want to go ahead and click on the actual contract here. So I'll click on the contract ID. And then you'll see the actual estimates that are available here for me to go ahead and record my payments for. So I'm, for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and select estimate number four. Okay, and so I launched to the contract payment summary page. I have estimate four, and this is the paid amount for this particular estimate, and then the, the previous total paid amount for the previous estimates, and the total paid amount uh, to date, which is the paid amount plus the previous total paid amount. And I want to go ahead and click on the subcontract payments tab here over to the left. And you'll see here, I have a link here, add subcontract payment from Prime. So this is the link. I want to go ahead and click on this link. And this launches the uh, page where I can go ahead and add my payment. So uh, one thing you can also do is in order to see what these fields uh, represent, if you hover, hover over the actual label for each of these, 
you can see that a tooltip launches here. So the payee is a reference vendor ID for the vendor receiving a payment for another vendor on the subcontract payment. So the payee here, I want to go ahead and use Lake Erie Construction. So it once I enter the name, it goes, it pops up here in the uh, display, and then I want to go ahead and select it. Now the uh, payee payment number is a unique identifier. So one thing I like to do is, since I know this is estimate four, I like to go ahead and start with four. And since this is the first estimate, I'll enter in zero one. Uh, it's, it's a nice way to keep track of your actual uh, payment numbers. But as long as the number is unique, uh, then you're OK. But uh, if you want to follow this uh, standard that I'm using, that's, that's totally fine. And then you want to enter in the date paid. So for this example, I'll say that well, we're going to make this payment as of yesterday. We paid yesterday. And then you want to select the payment type, uh, whether it's a final or a, a progress here. So we'll go ahead and say it's a uh, progress payment here. Now, the paid amount here is what you actually paid uh, to the subcontractor for this estimate. Um, now, also, if you are holding retainage, you want to make sure you are taking out that amount. So, for example, if you had an amount of thirteen thousand and you were holding back for retainage five hundred, you would want to enter in the actual amount that you paid. So we'd enter in twelve thousand five hundred here. So, because we were holding back five hundred dollars for retainage, and then uh, if the payee work was uh, completed, you'd want to go ahead and check this. So we'll just leave this blank for right now. And then we're ready to save our, our payment record. So as you can see here, there's currently uh, indicates there are unsaved changes. So if I go over to the save button, I want to go ahead and press the save button here. OK, and then you can see the message here, subcontractor payment successfully saved. So this payment record here, from the, the prime contractor, Cocosin Construction Company, to the subcontractor, Lake Erie Construction Company, has been saved. Okay, And now the next step would be to go ahead and sign that payment. So I want to go ahead and click on the contract payment link up here at the top. And then if I go ahead and click on the subcontractor payments tab, uh, you can see my actual payment that I recorded here from the prime contractor to the subcontractor. Now, if I open up the row actions menu here, I will see here that there is a link here for sign subcontract payment. Now, for some reason, if you notice that uh, you might have made a mistake or you may put in the wrong amount or the wrong date or something was incorrectly entered, you can actually delete the payment. So before you sign it, if you notice something is incorrect, go ahead and select delete, and then you would press the save button. Okay. So if everything looks good, we're ready to sign the payment. So I'll go ahead and click on the link to sign some contract payment. Now it's a three-step process here of signing the actual payment. And we'll wait for our review screen to come up. So once um, I'm at the review page here, you'll see the subcontractor, uh, subcontract payment report here. So this is one of the reports uh, that actually is used uh, from Ashtower uh, CRL. So you can see the actual data that I entered in, the payee payment number, 401, uh, the payee ID, and the actual payee name, the payment date, and the paid amount. So if everything looks good, I'll go ahead and scroll to the bottom and click on the right blue arrow. And then I'll go ahead and receive my verification text. that I'm actually verifying that this payment is correct. 
And once I'm good with that, I'll go ahead and scroll to the bottom and again, click on the right arrow. Um, now, this is where you want to go ahead and sign the payment. And as I previously mentioned, the FHWA 1273 acknowledgement tax is a default is entered in here in the comments field. And if it is a contract that is 100% state funded, you want to go ahead and highlight this and then press the backspace button or the delete button on your keyboard. And that will remove the actual FHWA 1273 tax. Okay, so for this uh, demonstration, we'll go ahead and leave the, uh, the text in there for, for now. So we're, I'm ready to go ahead and sign my payment. So I wanna go ahead and press the sign payment button. Okay, and then you can see here, I got this message here, successfully signed some contractor payment. Okay, and that's what you, that's what is expected. You should get that message when the payment has been signed. One thing you can also do is if you click on the endorsements tab over here to the left, you can see here uh, that it's been signed by the prime contractor and the date that it's been signed. But what's still pending here is the actual payee. The payee hasn't reviewed it. So that's our next step. So the prime contractor's part is, is complete for this specific payment. They've gone in there, they've recorded the payment to the subcontractor for this estimate, estimate number four, and they've signed it. So we'll go ahead and log off. And now I'm gonna go ahead and log in as the subcontractor. So I've got my username that I wanna use as my subcontractor. And again, make sure you select ODOT online when you log in and you'll enter your password. I have my password saved. So I'll go ahead and press the uh, log on button. And um, you'll see again here, the home page. Now we're logged in here as the subcontractor. And again, you wanna make sure you're using the ODOT contractor subpayment role. So if you have both the payroll role and the contractor subpayment role, please make sure you go in there, open up the drop down next to the home button and that you select this role, ODOT contractor subpayment. Okay, so we're ready to go ahead and verify our actual payment. So we want to enter in the same contract ID, LAK87799. And then our contract is displayed here and we wanna go ahead and click on the contract ID. Okay, so we have four estimates here. And the one that we recorded a payment on was estimate number four. So we'll go ahead and click on estimate four. And then uh, we wanna go ahead and uh, click on the subcontractor payments tab over here to the left. And now you can see the actual payment estimate or the payment that was made for this estimate here from the prime contractor to the subcontractor. So we can review this. Now we're ready to actually verify that payment. So if you open up the row actions menu for that payment record, you'll see the link here, verify payment. So you wanna go ahead and click that link. And similar to when the prime signed the payment, uh, the subcontractor will also have a three-step process here of verifying the payment. So they'll also see here the subcontract payment report here. So the actual data that was entered in by the prime contractor is displayed here in this, this report. And once they have reviewed that and they, have, they can go scroll down to the bottom and click the right blue arrow. And then you wanna go ahead and verify your receipt. Okay, so the options here are for payment received is no, yes as expected, yes not as expected. Okay, so for this demonstration, we'll say yes, the, the payment was as expected. And the payment uh, received here, or the amount received is 12,500. And you wanna make sure that you do enter this amount in here and then the date received. So since it was an electronic transfer, we'll say that it was received today. 
And then uh, we want to go ahead and leave the payees work on contract complete. We'll leave that unchecked. And then again, here you'll see the FHWA 1273 acknowledgement. Uh, if you are the subcontractor and that's working on the contract that's 100% state funded, you, again, you'd want to go and highlight that text and pass the uh, delete key on your keyboard. Okay. And then so for this uh, demonstration, we'll leave the text as is. And then we'll go ahead and click the right blue arrow. And once I'm good, I'm ready to go ahead and actually submit my verification. And I want to go ahead and press the button submit verification. Okay, so now you can see that I have successfully verified that payment. So the payment was made from the prime contractor. They signed it to the subcontractor. The subcontractor logged on and then they went ahead and verified it. Now let's say I have a tiered subcontractor and this subcontractor here uh, that wants to go ahead and make a payment out to a tiered subcontractor. So what they could do is go ahead and click on the contract payment. And then you wanna click on that subcontractor payment again. And then you can go ahead and open up the row actions menu for that payment. And you wanna go ahead and add new payment from payee. So this subcontractor now is gonna make a payment to a tiered subcontractor. So we're gonna go ahead and for this example, uh, our payee is gonna be our RATH Builders Supply. And I think I missed an S here. There it is. Okay. So you can see here the payee is launched here. And then I want to go ahead and enter a payee uh, payment number. So we'll go ahead and use 402 for our demonstration purposes. And we'll say that uh, the date paid was today. And we'll go ahead and select a payment type. We'll say that this is a final payment. And then we'll say that we paid them $800 for this uh, estimate. And then uh, if the payee work complete indicator, you wanna check that if the payee has worked it, uh, work has completed the work. And then once I've entered in my data in the uh, subcontractor payment uh, field here, on this page, I want to go ahead and press the save button. Okay, and now I'm ready to go ahead and sign this payment here. So if I click on the contract payment link and click on subcontractor payments, I can see the two payments here. The first one up on top here is the one that the prime made out to the subcontractor and then the second one here is the one that the subcontractor made out to its subcontractor. So I'm ready to go ahead and sign that payment. Again, you wanna open up the row actions menu and select the link for sign subcontractor payment. And very similar, you're gonna go through the process here of reviewing. So everything looks good on my report here. I'll click the right blue arrow and I'll go through my verification text. Everything looks good there. Then click the arrow again at the bottom. And then uh, we'll go ahead and leave the FHW 1273 text in place. And then I'll go ahead and click the sign payment button. Okay, and then you can see here the payment has been signed. So this payment that was made out to our tiered subcontractor has been successfully signed. And again, if you click on the endorsements, you can see here that the, the payment was signed here by the actual subcontractor. And what's pending is still the payee. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and log off the system and we're gonna log in as a tier subcontractor. So my username here for the tier subcontractor, I'm gonna go ahead and enter that in and I wanna go ahead and log in again. 
So now I'm going to log in here as Wrath Builders. And again, please make sure that uh, you are using the actual uh, correct role ODOT contractor subpayment. And under contract overview, I want to go ahead and type in the contract ID, LAK87799. And I want to go ahead and click on my contract ID. And then you'll see here, estimate four, that was the estimate that the payment was made out from the subcontractor. And then if I click on the subcontract payments tab, I can see my actual payment that was made here from the subcontractor to the tiered subcontractor. So again, very similar. I'll go ahead and open the row actions menu and verify that payment by clicking the verify payment link. And I'll go through my verify, verify payment process here. And I look, confirmed the data looks correct. And then I'll go ahead and click the blue arrow. And then I'm gonna go say, hey, yeah, payment, yes, as expected and received $800 and it was received uh, today. And then I'll go ahead and check the payee's work on contract complete. I'll go ahead and check that checkbox and then I'll go ahead and navigate to the next page. And so I'm ready to go ahead and submit this verification as my tiered subcontractor by clicking the button. And now the tiered subcontractor has verified that payment from the subcontractor. And again, if you click on the endorsements, uh, you can see here the actual who signed it here, the subcontractor, when they signed it, and then the payee uh, it will display here the username and also when they had reviewed it as well. Okay, so that's the endorsements. You can always use that to see if it's been signed by the prime contractor or the subcontractor. And then likewise, if it's uh, a payment out to the tiered subcontractor, if the subcontractor signed it and the, the tiered contractor, tier subcontractor has reviewed it. Okay, so that completes the uh, demonstration part of actually entering in the payment uh, it shows you how we entered the payment from the prime to the sub, and then also entered the payment from the sub to the tiered sub and completed the signing process. Uh, one thing I do want to show you is I did indicate that we, if you have retainage, you want to enter that in the paid amount. Um, we are in a future release going to have enabled here is the withholding tab. And this is what it will look like. Uh, this is not currently enabled in our system, but when we do have it enabled, you'll see a separate tab here for withholding where you can actually enter in the retainage dollars that are held. So when this fee, uh, tab is enabled in the system, we'll go ahead and send out a notice to the industry that it's available for you to actually enter in your retainage amount. But uh, since it's not currently available in the system right now, you want to go ahead and indicate that in the paid amount, like I showed you previously. Okay, so that is the demonstration part. We'll go ahead and continue our webinar here. Uh, we do have a couple of reports that are available uh, for you to use. Uh, the first report here is the contractor with missing subpayments and or signatures. So if you're a prime contractor, you can use this report to see which payments you need to enter in on which estimates. So for example, if you see here, the actual estimate number two is in red and it's been signed, this indicates no. So if there is no payments recorded for that, estimate, you'll see that it is displayed in red. So once you have entered a payment on that estimate, it would no longer be displayed in red, like you see in estimate number one. So if there are payments that need to be recorded for that estimate, uh, you would go ahead and record those payments. And if it's work that's self-performed, 
meaning that there's no subcontract work, you would go ahead and leave it as is and you would not record any payments at, for that particular estimate. Okay, so this report is available for you to use. Uh, you can go ahead and note the uh, URL. Uh, also, when you receive a copy of the uh, slide presentation, you can also uh, copy the URL from that. And if you like, you can go ahead and save this uh, site uh, as a favorite so you can access it any time. So uh, please use this report. It's, it's very helpful to know which payments you as a prime contractor need to record your uh, payments for on your specific estimates. So, so it's good to review this on a regular basis. Uh, likewise, we also have a, a report here for the subcontractor. So the subcontractor can use this report, which is the prompt pay subcontractor payment report, and to use this report to see which payments that they need to verify. So if the prime has already entered the payment and has signed that payment and is pending verification for the subcontractor, they can actually see which payments that they need to verify. You would basically enter in your vendor ID here and press the view report button. Very similar to how you would use uh, for the report for the prime contractor. So again, these reports um, are available for your use as an external, uh, from external use. So you can use them at, uh, at, at any time. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and discuss payment affidavits. So what is a payment affidavit? The affidavit seeks to verify the actual payments made to DBE firms on the project. So each DBE firm must verify the actual pay, payment amount. So the current process that's in place is the prime contractor submits to DBE subcontractor the notarized interim and final affidavit. And then the DBE subcontractor signs and notarizes the interim and final affidavit and returns to the prime contractor. Then the prime contractor submits all the DBE interim and final affidavits to ODOT DBE goal attainment coordinator. So this process is currently in place and it will still stay in place until we have notified to the industry that it's uh, no longer needed to do this. Okay, the, the main differences between payment affidavits and CRL. So payment affidavits are only submitted for DBEs and payment affidavits do not allow ODOT to monitor prompt payment, whereas CRL captures all payments to all subcontractors, DBE and non-DBE. Okay, we do have contact information. Uh, please note the email address for CRL support, dot.crl.support at dot.ohio.gov. So if you're in need uh, to get onboarded to CRL, you need a username, you would go ahead and email CRL support, and we will respond back to you with some instructions uh, to get onboarded. And then once you are onboarded, you'll receive a username, you'll establish your own password, and then you can log in very similar to how I did, and you can re record your payments or verify your payments. Uh, please also note the CRL website that's available. This is a, the resource website and the, the URL. And then if you need to contact your contract compliance officer uh, for any compliance questions, the list of compliance officers is available at the uh, URL stated here at the bottom of this slide deck. Okay, we do have reference materials. Uh, the subcontractor payments um, computer-based training is available from the CRL resource website. Uh, it is an interactive guide, it could guide you step-by-step. Step. Uh, you can use this uh, by clicking on the link here from the uh, reference materials. And you need, do need to use uh, Internet Explorer and have Adobe Acrobat Reader and Flash installed on your system. So please make sure you're using Internet Explorer and not Chrome. Okay, we do also have frequently asked questions about payment reporting, and you can visit that at the URL.
and we have a complaint hotline. Please note the uh, phone number and the email address for reporting DBE fraud, contracting fraud, prompt payment violations, and discriminations. And this contact is also available from our division website. Okay, with that, we'll open it up with the, any questions you may have. And I believe David will be joining us as well. David, if you are, <clears throat> oh, there you go. I'm here, I'm sorry, I need a cough button because I, I have a little sore throat, but I'll try to keep that to a minimum. Um, yes, we have some questions. So I will start. Um, first one is what happens if you do not receive an invoice from the subcontractor or supplier during the 10 day period? So I think that's referring to the 10 days to make um, a, the, for the prime to pay. Um, and we, we've been discussing this, and um, I think the answer is basically it's it, there is if you don't receive an invoice from the subcontractor or supplier, then as long as it's not inconsistent with your subcontract or your purchase order, then you don't need to pay that subcontractor or supplier because you didn't receive an invoice from them basically so you don't have the exact you don't know what you're what they're expecting so you would just include that if, if you receive it from the subcontractor or supplier it, you know once once you receive it from them then you have to include it but this is a complicated question. I'm I'm sort of stumbling here. We're we're still finalizing our our ultimate response in our and it'll be in our frequently asked questions. But basically, you don't have to pay a subcontractor or a supplier if you're expecting to receive an invoice from them and you didn't. Does that make sense? On wait. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That sounds right. So. Um, we can go ahead and add that to the frequently asked questions once we have it um, exactly detailed out. Okay. All right. The next question is, I do not have a subpayment role option on my screen, only a payroll role. How can that subpayment role be added? Yes, yeah, so please email CRL support and we'll go ahead and add that role for you and then you'll receive a message that that role has been added and then you can continue the process. All right. Um, what if the payment from ODOT is for work you entirely self-performed and no subcontract payment is due? What does the prime do in this case? Yeah, so you would not record any payment out to your subcontractor for that particular estimate since it was self-performed. So it on the report that I just showed you previously, it may still show as red uh, on that report. Um, and we're gonna be, ODOT's gonna be regularly monitoring that report. Uh, but if, if it's something that's self-performed, you just wouldn't record any payment out to your subcontractor. And then once, if you did have a, a payment that you need to record, it would go ahead and show up on that report as the actual uh, amount that you paid out to your subcontractor. Right, and I mean, our our uh, intent is not to find fault with a prime for having just a little bit of red, red lines on that report. I mean, it's understandable that for some payment estimates you get from ODOT, there won't be any subcontract payments due. So what we're looking for really is just large amounts of red, which might might lead us to question if the sub if the prime reported all of their payments. 
accurately, or they missed some. All right. The next question, when would you use yes, not as expected? Uh, I mean, if, you, if you received an amount, uh, but but it wasn't as expected an amount. For example, let's say you were expecting $1,000, but you only received 500 of that. That's when you would enter that, or that's when you would select that option. Right. So yes, as expected would be that you got paid everything that you were expecting. Yes, not as expected is if you just you got paid something different than you were expecting. And Correct. then no would be didn't get paid, basically. That's right. Okay. When or why did you leave the FHWA text in for the tiered sub? Uh, it depends on what type of contract it is. So if it's a federally funded contract, I'd still want to leave that that text in there. So if it's a contract that's 100% state funded, I'd want to go ahead and remove that. So if, for this demonstration purposes, I was using a contract, I believe that was federally funded. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I left the text in there. But if you're like, uh, if you're working on a contract that you know is 100% state funded, uh, you'd want to go ahead and remove that text. Currently right now we have it in there by default, uh, but you as the prime or the sub or the tiered sub would just remove that accordingly, depending on what type of how the funding is for that specific contract. Right. So just the FHWA 1273 form has to be physically incorporated into every tiered subcontract if it's a federally funded project. But and we're we're changing how we're going to be monitoring that particular aspect. So. Um, that's going to, that boilerplate text won't be included in a future release of CRL. So that will be something you don't have to worry about in the near future. So, uh, do we need to add payments for DBE suppliers? Yes. The answer is yes. Payments to DBE suppliers, you do. Um, how do you find the correct payee number if there are multiple listed? Uh, you can look on, uh, it should have, um, there's a report out there that has the list of subcontractors. Uh, it's available in a site manager report. And you can use the actual vendor ID that's associated with that subcontractor and then enter that same ID for the payee. And yeah, that, possibly put that into the frequently asked questions as well, that report that they can use to get the list of subs. Right. I have I have noticing where some uh maybe mistakes are being made where people are putting in an incorrect payee. So yeah, it's important to make sure you're using the right one. Yep, good point. So, um, I have attempted to verify payments in the system, but there is no verify payment link on some payments. What does this mean? Uh, it's likely that the prime has not signed the payment. So you may be yeah. seeing that that payment. Uh, like if if you go to the endorsements, uh, you will see if it's been signed or not by the prime. So if the prime has not signed it, you would not be able to verify the payment. So if you use the report that I showed previously for the subcontractor, that should show you which payments you need to verify. That's kind of your, your source that you can use um, to, to find out exactly which payments you need to go in and, and verify. The report is a one-day delay, so you might verify the payment, but the report won't be reflected until the next morning. So if you have, you know, 
five payments out there and you verified all five payments, uh, the report will show still that you still need to verify those five until the next day because it's a one day delay. So yeah, use that report and that will show you which ones that you need to verify. Okay. Will the subcontractor get automatic notification when the prime uploads payment information? Yeah, so currently the system does not send a notification uh, to the subcontractor when it's ready, when that payment is ready to be signed. Uh, we are looking to have that functionality, functionality enabled for a future release of CRL. Uh, but for right now, uh, you can go ahead and use the two reports that I showed you to find out exactly which ones that you need to go ahead and enter your payments for and which ones that you need to verify as a subcontractor. That's pretty much your, your source that you can use to get your actual accurate information. All right. Um, where are the links to the reports? Uh, when you receive a copy of the slide deck, um, I be believe Victoria will be sending that out. Uh, the actual report links will be there on those uh, two slides that I had showed you. Okay. Does the tier two sub need to create a username and log in? Yes. So if you are a sub or a tiered sub, you'll still need to log in uh, to CRL. So if you're a tiered sub that needs to verify that payment and you don't yet have a login, please go ahead and contact CRL support and we'll go ahead and reply back to you to get you onboarded. So whether you're a prime or sub or tiered sub, you, you still need a username and you'll still log into the system. Okay, how do we know if a project is federally funded? Uh, I believe it should be in your, your contract um, on actually what the, how much how the funding is divided. Um, and David, maybe you might have another source that they can refer to as well. Uh, there is a report, um, I think, that will explain that. Um, we'll, we'll have to include that in the frequently asked questions because I don't know it off the top of my head. And that's another, but that's another reason why we're going to take away this uh, or change how we're doing that this FHWA 1273 process because it's not always clear. I mean, it should be basically. I, I guess the answer is if if you you should have received a physical copy of the FHWA 1273 form with your subcontract, and if you did, then that would tell you the job is federally funded. But there's no guarantee that everybody's, you know, giving those to their subcontractors just yet. So, that, um, they're, again, we're trying to figure out a better way to make sure that that's happening. But we'll make sure we get the word out to people about how they can check to see if the job is federal funded or not. So, okay. can you have one login for all, or do you need different logins for being a prime sub or sub sub? Uh, no, you would just have one login. Uh, so, depending on that contract, so if you're a prime on that contract, you would just go ahead and record your payments out to your subcontractor. But if you're a, if you're a sub for a different contract, then you would enter in a different contract ID. Uh, similar to how I showed in the demo, I entered in the, the contract ID. Uh, you would just enter in that specific contract ID that you're a sub for and just continue the process as a sub to, to go ahead and verify that payment. So if, if you're working as both a prime and a sub, like on some contract, you might one contract you might be a prime, another contract you're a sub, uh, you want to go ahead and use uh, both reports. The, contractor with missing subpayments 
uh, report and the uh, subcontractor with missing, uh, or excuse me, the, the prompt payment uh, subcontractor report to see which uh, payments you need to record as a prime and which payments do you need to verify as a subcontractor. So those reports will, will list the actual uh, contract ID and then you can use that to see which ones that you need to record and then which ones you need to verify. So yeah, it would be the same user ID that you use for both. All right. How should a subcontractor proceed if a payment is entered twice to verify payment? Should we just verify one of the entries? Uh, yeah, if, I mean, if it was like a payment that was inadvertently entered by the prime contractor, uh, one of them you can go ahead and select no uh, and then enter in 00, 0, 0. 0.00 for the paid amount. So that will nullify that was the one that was inadvertently entered. And then for the other one, for the correct amount, you want to go ahead and select your actual options here, whether it was a yes or yes, not as expected, and the actual amount received. So if if it was a one that was mistakenly entered by the prime, they still signed it, but they can't delete that payment. Uh, you as a sub just would indicate that it was a no on that one that was mistakenly entered and just put in 0.00. .00. All right. As a subcontractor, if I am paying a company for materials, do I enter them as a subcontractor payment to my supplier? I would I'm going to say that if it's a if you're do if you have a sub I mean, if you're doing sorry, payments to non-DBE suppliers do not need to be entered. So only if you if you're a subcontractor and you're paying a DBE for materials then yes you would need to enter them but if it's just if you're just paying a non DBE supplier then you don't need to enter those payments So somebody uh at said that for federally funded projects, the federal project number is on the cover page of the proposal, and the bid results by letting show the project's funding. Yes. So if you know how to get to that, if you have the cover page of the proposal, then you can see that, and you can um, tell if your project is federally funded. And it's also in the bid results by letting. Well, I hate to jump in here, but we've only got two minutes left until 10 o'clock, and I know we want to be respectful of everyone's time. So is there anything else that the two of you would like to add before we wrap things up? Um, well, so basically, you know, if you have questions or need assistance, so to just go ahead and, and contact Seattle Support, and um, we do get a quite a few requests coming in, but we're doing our best to, to to respond back to you as soon as we can. And we'll try to answer all your questions the best that we can. And we're mm -hmm. entering in, you know, questions that are frequently asked into the FAQ. So please do, please do visit that site for the frequently asked questions and we'll try to get your uh, questions answered as best we can. Yeah, we were, we were not able to answer all the questions people asked today. So um, we will try to answer everything in the frequently asked questions and um, we will try to make sure that we think thoughtfully of the correct answers for everybody. Well, I know that everybody appreciates that and I know that both of you have been working very hard on this project and that you're dedicated to making sure that this is a very smooth process, as smooth as it can be for those who are going to be participating in it. So thank you for doing these educational sessions via webinar for everyone. And we look forward to being able to partner with you in the future to provide more educational opportunities for those who are going to be using the, the program. So I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar for everybody. I hope everybody has a good day. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you.